All right. So here we go. We're now recording. Thanks, everyone, for being with us. Uh, excited to talk about uh, APES ministry, sometimes called Fivefold Ministry. Um, and we're also going to relate this to the Avengers <laughs> to help us kind of get um, a grasp about what we're talking about. Uh, so for those that are familiar with kind of our strategy for church growth um, and organizational growth, uh, this fits in uh, to our church planting strategy of replicate um, when we talk about growing strong branches of leaders. Uh, naturally, as churches grow and flourish, we'll see that uh, these ministries and really these giftings of people uh, naturally grow up uh, within these organic communities, these organic churches. Uh, so in the seven phases of replicate, for those that, that have heard us talk about this in the past, um, we see that this naturally happens in growing up strong branches of the church. Uh, so excited to dive into this a little bit and talking about what is this APES ministry? Um, what is it that we're talking about? Um, and the core of it, it comes from the passage. If you have your Bibles, they can turn with me to Ephesians chapter four. And um, we see this uh, it's not just a concept only here in scripture, it's all throughout scripture, uh, but this is a very core passage to understand what we're talking about in terms of this five-fold ministry, and we're going to dig in very deep with it. Uh, so turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4, uh, starting verse 11 through 13. So uh, Paul here, he says, and he, that's Jesus, that he personally gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists some pastors and some teachers for the training of the saints and the work of ministry to build up the body of Christ until we all reach unity and faith and the knowledge of God's son, growing into a mature man with a stature measured by Christ's fullness as each individual part. So I know that a lot of people are familiar with uh, spiritual gifting tests and a lot of us maybe might be familiar with personality tests. Uh, when we talk about the five-fold giftings, these are special vocations, it says, that Christ has given to the church. Uh, these are gifts given to us so that we can grow up as a mature body. So each one of these roles is a gift to the body. Uh, each one of us, as members of the church, we offer ourselves as a gift uh, to the collective whole. And we're going to dive in today and talk about what are these different ministries, uh, what's involved in these five different gifts that have been given, and what is it they bring to the church and a church growth. Uh, so right now we're going to do like a very kind of, uh, we'll, we'll slowly add layers to the description of each one of these roles. Uh, but in short, apostles, apostles are those that extend the gospel as sent ones. Prophets know God's will. Uh, they're very familiar with the, the covenant of God. Um, and they're always striving to lead community to God. Uh, the evangelists are recruiters, um, and they're passionate communicators of the message of God, of uh, the gospel. Uh, shepherds are those that nurture and protect their caregivers of the community of Christ. Um, and teachers are those that understand and explain and are effective communicators of the truth and wisdom of God. Uh, so as we think about the church um, being a body of Christ, as we think about the church being an organism, uh, each one of these giftings in a way is its own branch. Um, it, and in a way uh, has it to do with supporting the growth of the church um, in its own respected area, okay? Um, so uh, going on, it says that as Christ gave these uh, gave these gifts, it says that he did this for the training of the saints and the work of ministry to build up the body of Christ until we all reach unity. Um, so these giftings in themselves help us uh, to grow as brothers and sisters, and they help us to reach unity together as the church. So some of these uh, giftings will have to do more uh, with our outreach as the body of Christ, and some of them have to do more with our inreach, uh, but collectively as a whole, uh, it creates a balanced growth. Um, so some of you guys that um, knew about the session ahead of time may have done a analysis. There's a lot of online analysis. Um, I'll share with you if you're watching this recorded, a few places that you can take uh, a test to find your gifting in an easy way. Um, and there's a, lot of, there's a lot of great tools for that. 
Um, so if you take a test like this, it will show you maybe your top uh, one gifting, and this is your primary, uh, your primary gifting. Um, and then you might have a number two and a number three uh, that you might move to. And depending on the time of your life, actually, and depending on the community that you're in, these can grow and develop uh, in different ways. So the APES giftings, uh, you, might, you might adapt more in your APES giftings than you might even see if you take like a personality test, for example. Uh, because depending on the organization you work in, you might have to shift um, in your gifting at times. So I have an example here of just uh, of mine so you can kind of see what those might look like um, as, as you take one. Um, you can see that I primarily um, am an apostle. <laughs> Um, I'm primarily an apostle, and then my second highest typically are an evangelist um, and a prophet. Uh, but in some cases, uh, probably like right now in my life, uh, I've been doing a lot of these equipping sessions. My teacher might score very high. So depending on just the time of your life, you take this test, you know, especially your third, your fourth, they might score very differently. But I primarily it makes a lot of sense because um, apostles are very uh, strong pioneers. They go out into new things, and I came to hear to Thailand uh, doing business as missions. Uh, so it's not that shocking, right, um, to, that I'm an, an apostle. So we'll dig in a little bit more in talking about these giftings and in talking, especially I want to give a little extra time and talking a bit about apostles and prophets uh, because in modern Christian history, uh, we've lost almost touch. We've almost uh, forgotten uh, some of these giftings and we've really um, kind of pushed aside, um, ignored in many ways uh, the roles of apostles, modern apostles, and modern prophets in today's church. Uh, so I want to clarify something a little bit as we talk about apostles and prophets, uh, because in the Bible, uh, some of you may be familiar with the concept of a lowercase apostle and a capital A apostle. Do you understand what I'm getting at? So throughout scripture, we know that there are only 12 uh, 12 sent apostles by Jesus, uh, the, the commission 12 by Jesus, that it had like a specific authority. Um, there were those uh, specifically called and sent out. Uh, so we might call these capital A apostles uh, because that was a specific 12, right, that Jesus gave a role to. But throughout scripture, um, we see actually that the term apostle uh, continues to be used as just sent one is literally what this word means. Um, just like Jesus says, as the Father has sent me, so now I send you. Um, and we see examples uh, in the New Testament of apostles mentioned that are not included in the 12. Um, here's a list here, and I'll send a, I can send this as a copy so you can kind of dive into it later. Uh, but here's uh, several places throughout Scripture that we see named um, other apostles outside of the 12. Uh, so those, the, those that many will know are Barnabas, um, is called an apostle, and definitely worked um, in the ministry of an apostle as the church sent him and Paul out. Uh, we know also that uh, Junia is mentioned, a female apostle in the book of uh, Romans. Uh, some that are, that are more common to us that we know well are Silas and Timothy, who worked very closely uh, with Paul and Barnabas. Uh, so we know those roles, right? Uh, were in their ministry and in that church planning time. Yeah, they're the ones that often were uh, the first to enter cities. Uh, they were the first to kind of break the ground. Uh, this is the concept of a, a lower A apostle. Um, so another term that we might not be that familiar with and might not be that comfortable with uh, is also the idea of a prophet, right? Because we know that there were some people uh, that received uh, special divine messages from God, right? And we might think of even those that uh, wrote and recorded books of the Bible as, as prophets. Uh, they were giving God's word. Um, this is this, the concept of, yes, a capital P prophet. So we talk right now about uh, there's still being modern prophets. We're not saying that like someone's going to have divine revelation and, and rewriting new gospels and new things. No, that's what we're not saying because we know that the gospel has come in full, right? But prophets, uh, even, in, even throughout scripture, the capital P prophets that we might know of uh, Prophets are always those uh, that have a hunger and desire uh, for bearing the covenant of God, right? And we see throughout history, man, prophets are often persecuted, right? Uh, but they are often persecuted because they're the ones that are going to stand up and to raise a voice 
uh, when people and their community are drifting away from the promises and the covenant of God. Um, so we see throughout, um, also even in the New Testament, other prophets mentioned then, uh, and sometimes even prophetic warning given, like we see from Philip's four daughters, you can check this out on your own in Acts chapter 21, where their prophets, yeah, might know, uh, might have a special gifting uh, to realize things that are a warning that could happen. They can see outside threats, uh, perhaps before others, and we can get into that some more. Does so everyone kind of get that there? Uh, the idea of capital A and lowercase a, capital P, lowercase P, when I'm talking about prophets and shepherds? All righty, awesome. So we'll get moving forward here a little bit to dive in deeper into all of these. And as we talk about the APES, um, we, all, we all bear all five of the giftings, right? Now, there's a little bit of all of them, at least, a little bit of all of them in, in each one of us. And through Jesus, actually, we see that Jesus, he's the ultimate example of each of the five giftings. He's like level, level one. He's the greatest example of all five of the giftings. And we see, actually, scripture uh, display this. In John chapter 20, verse 21, uh, Jesus says, uh, peace you as the father sends me uh, now i send you there's the root greek the root greek there where is apasta legging uh it's this idea of sending out uh he's the ultimate apostle he came to this world sent by the father god um, we see also that jesus he's this ultimate example of a prophet um it was foreknown that the messiah would come as a prophet um, in Acts, uh, Peter shares this. It says that uh, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your brothers, and you must listen to him and everything that he says to you. Uh, so they knew that this prophet was going to come, uh, and that person was Jesus. Um, and then Jesus, uh, as he went out in his ministry, uh, he himself says, a prophet is not without honor. A prophet is not respected in his own hometown. And we know that he wasn't received by everyone, which is common uh, for prophets. We see that Jesus is the ultimate example of the evangelist. Um, as he goes out from towns to villages, Matthew records in chapter nine, verse 35, teaching in their synagogue and preaching the good news, uh, the even leglion, the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and every sickness. The cool thing about the word evangelist um, is that we get this word from the word gospel, the transliteration of the word uh, gospel in Greek. Um, so they are direct bearers of this good news, this message of Christ. Um, then we see also that he's the ultimate example of a shepherd. Um, Jesus says that I am the good shepherd in John chapter 10. The good shepherd lays on his life for his sheep. Um, we see he's also the ultimate example of the teacher. Um, when the crowds came, when he saw the crowds, uh, he sat down on the mountain and he began to teach them. Um, and the woman at the well, this is the Samaritan concept of the Messiah, says, I know that when Messiah is coming, who he is called Christ, uh, that when he comes, he'll explain everything to us. Because uh, he was a passionate um, and patient teacher as well. Uh, so it's it's awesome to see um, in one person him move and shift throughout these five roles um, and throughout these five ministry types and styles. Um, so as we dig in a little deeper into just understanding each of the five giftings, um, I'll compare them to the Avengers. <laughs> um, Avengers, a lot of people kind of are aware of at least who they are. Um, even if you haven't seen the movies or something, you might be familiar with, yeah, there's an Iron Man, there's a these kind of guy. Um, and in their group, while they're very diverse, um, they work together, right? Um, while they're very diverse, and sometimes they can clash and they can butt heads, but when they unite together for one goal, man, it's awesome. That's what makes them powerful, right? And that's how it is with the five-fold ministry, the five-fold giftings. Uh, so we'll give a little illustration and dive in uh, to the profile of five different Avengers and what they kind of bring to the table as Avengers, all right? So the first one is the apostle, uh, Nick Fury. So Nick Fury, if you've seen kind of the movies, uh, he's the one that brings the Avengers together. Um, apostles are very systematic thinkers. 
um, and they're entrepreneur. So they're the ones that are most likely to start a new cause. Uh, they're creative, they're risk takers, um, and they're strong networkers. Um, it will often be the apostle that will recruit and round up the others. Uh, apostles have the ability to see uh, the potential and the giftings actually in the other four ministries. Uh, so Nick Fury, for those of you familiar in of the Avengers, he's the he's the uh, apostle. Um, the next we have Tony Stark, uh, the prophet. Uh, so those kind of familiar with Tony Stark and Iron Man, uh, Tony is a questioner. He's a deep thinker, right? But he's a reformer. He's he's not afraid to go against the grain. Uh, he's a futurist. He's always kind of thinking ahead, um, and he's often. Uh, more concerned about how he believes things should be done than the opinions of others, right? <laughs> He's not that concerned about hurting people's feelings as much as he is uh, about his own convictions and about what he knows is right or wrong. Um, and he believes in making the needed change, uh, even, even if it seems risky to others. Uh, so Tony Stark, Iron Man, the prophet. The evangelist um, is Black Widow. And Natasha Romanoff, for those who are familiar with her, uh, Natasha in like the movie series, for those who aren't familiar, she's in like every movie. Um, and I think that this especially shows how she's an evangelist because everyone loves an evangelist. Uh, evangelists are bearers of good news. Um, they're the ones that are often most likely to, to meet those that are not yet Christians. Uh, they're gonna be the person that's uh, most easy to talk to just in life in general. Um, and that's definitely Natasha, Black Widow. Um, everyone loves talking to her and she's a spy. Uh, so she knows how to engage each person and then meet them where they are. And um, they often will work very closely related to the apostle, right? Um, so she's kind of the recruiter. Uh, she's the one that will bear the message and also help bring others uh, to the cause of Christ. Uh, and then the shepherd, a really great example of just a shepherd uh, personality is Captain America, Steve Rogers, right? Uh, because he's a great example of being a servant leader um, and he's concerned about his team. Uh, he's more concerned often about his team uh, than even the mission, um, but protecting and guarding his team to the point where he'd be even willing to die for them, um, to die for his flock like a good shepherd we see in scripture. And we see this uh, throughout the comic books and the movies. Uh, there's nothing that Steve Rogers won't do uh, to help uh, those that are helpless, and then especially uh, to help those that are fighting on his side. Uh, and then the teacher, uh, for the teacher, those that are familiar with the movies and the comic books, the teacher is Bruce Banner, uh, who also can become the Hulk. And if you've seen the movies, uh, Bruce Banner uh, is more passionate about his ability to teach and to share knowledge then he is about smashing things as the Hulk, right? <laughs> He's normally trying to suppress his power as the Hulk, and that's because uh, a real teacher loves learning. They love learning new information, and they love passing on that knowledge that they've learned with others. This is how they find uh, enjoyment in life, um, to go out um, into new and unknown environments is not something that is appealing to them. <laughs> you know, they wanna stick with what they're familiar with, um, and they love digging in uh, all the deeper in the knowledge that they have. Uh, this is the gifting of the teacher. Uh, so it's neat to look at these uh, different giftings. It's like, okay, I'm kind of getting the concept of these, but so what? <laughs> you know, so what? Uh, what, is it, what does it matter uh, to know these things? And why is it important for me uh, to maybe know the giftings of those around me? Well, it matters because at times, at times our giftings can clash. Um, there are certain APES giftings or certain giftings in the fivefold ministries uh, that can directly actually at times oppose each other. Uh, one of the strongest examples is that of the apostle and shepherd or that of the shepherd and the prophet, uh, just because of what they might see as best uh, for group growth could differ. Um, and this is true we see in the Avengers movies, right? Uh, because there's a whole movie based on this idea uh, where Tony Stark, who's a prophet, he cares about the rules. Uh, we have this code, we have the law um, that we can't go against. Um, so he took a stand um, and followed with the governmental rules and it caused this huge civil war within their group. And Captain America, even though he's Captain America, uh, he was willing to, to go underground, to leave the government, to guard and protect his friend. 
And this ultimately is what caused the two of them to, to butt heads, right? Uh, but they both cared about their mission to guard, to save the world. But yet, um, when losing sight of the big picture, uh, these two, uh, we saw this clash and them opposing each other. Uh, so it's good to look at it from just the simple standpoint of understanding, having grace and compassion with one another. But two, each gifting, like we said before, is needed for the growth and development of the body of Christ. And actually, each one of these ministry will have an offshoot of a large variety of ministries. Uh, so later with our church, uh, the gathering, we'll dive in and we'll break out and to talk about uh, how ministries that we're a part of already, things we have already going on, uh, which gifting is it that they fit into? Uh, we'll talk about here in a little bit, but just to kind of give you an idea at how church ministry could look across APES giftings, here's a little bit of a map. Uh, so things for an apostle, you might think of uh, church planting strategies and, and networking movements, uh, these strategic plans, uh, these are all things that an apostle uh, would be a part of. Um, and our church prophets are especially passionate about social justice issues, uh, helping, uh, helping the forgotten, uh, looking after the poor. Uh, they're often involved uh, with prayer and worship ministry, uh, praise ministry, advocacy uh, for those uh, that need help. Uh, evangelists are often engaged uh, with outside activities, uh, recruiting, uh, street evangelism, uh, campus ministries, outreach events, uh, spending time with new believers in the church. Uh, shepherds we see oftentimes are leaders of care groups. Uh, they do ca pastoral care. They're often going to be the ones where someone's sick, uh, they wanna go out and visit them. They wanna check up uh, on the people that haven't been in our groups in a while. And then we have those that are gifted as teachers. Uh, and this one we understand uh, quite a bit better than others. Today, uh, we're most familiar with the giftings of shepherd and teacher uh, is what we primarily have focused on in recent history. Uh, so teachers we're familiar with, uh, they love coming with materials, they love writing materials, they love teaching classes, uh, maybe doing outside camps. Anytime we can have focused time on digging into the word of God, man, the teachers are going to be about that. Um, and for us, even young churches uh, like ours, we're already engaged um, in ministries involved in each of the five areas. Uh, so we see that each one of these areas, some of you might be naturally more drawn to a concept of ministry, and that's great. Uh, just because you have a passion towards one ministry, let's say uh, praise and worship, that doesn't make you any better <laughs> or worse uh, than someone that's really excited about street evangelism. This is just a natural part of who you are um, as a believer and as a Christian according to your gifting. Uh, so we see that each one of these, like we said before, is given to the body uh, for the proper working of each individual part is we see the body is built up. It's gifted in this way. And some of these, uh, some of these vocations, these giftings fit into the church environment in a different way. I have a little diagram to illustrate this for those that can see. So this just says APES, and I have here this kind of inner circle. Um, and if you think of this inner circle as the church, uh, this kind of is an illustration to show uh, where these giftings feel most comfortable within the church as a group, and really uh, where they're most likely to spend the most time with their church. Uh, so we see that shepherds and teachers are often primarily going to be with the body of Christ. Uh, shepherds want to be with their sheep. Teachers want to be teaching that community. They're most likely to be inside the body. Uh, the evangelist, the recruiter, they're often going in and out. Uh, like Natasha Rofanoff, as we think of the Black Widow, you know, she's going out on missions. She's coming back. Uh, so we see the evangelists. Uh, yeah, they love to be in the body. Uh, they love that time, but they want to be out with the loss as well. And then we see the, uh, the apostles and the prophets. They're actually going to feel a bit more comfortable outside of uh, their Christian community a lot of times, outside of that environment of the church, especially the apostle, they're the pioneer, they're out there. And then the prophet, um, they're often uh, so close and connected with God. Uh, sometimes they can wrestle and struggle in various ways, just fitting in with the overall body of Christ. Uh, so this is kind of a diagram to show how you might feel more comfortable within a church environment. So as we look at this as well, uh, there's kind of two groups that can be broken down as we think about church planting and church growth. And we call these two different groups uh, settlers and pioneers. Settlers and pioneers. And this is a term that we use in America because when America was first founded, 
uh, pioneers went there. They're the starters. Uh, those that first go and start are the pioneers. And then settlers are those that kind of s that stayed and settled. Uh, they built the cities. Uh, they helped it to flourish and to grow. Uh, so there'll be those two different groups. Uh, the settlers, those that stay and grow are the teacher, the shepherds, and evangelists. So when a church plant happens and a new group leaves, uh, this isn't most likely to be them. You'll have your teachers and shepherds and evangelists. Uh, but those pioneers, those that go out uh, to start new things, you'll have your team of apostles, prophets, and evangelists. Um, so as you recruit uh, people or as you launch a new venture with your church, with your ministry, it's going to think about who are my apostles, who are my prophets, who are my evangelists uh, to go out to be a part of pioneering that. If you're wanting to work on uh, enriching your body, uh, building up, strengthening your church, um, it'll be your teachers, your shepherds, your evangelists. Uh, they're going to do that in reach focus ministry. Um, so looking at it as a whole, kind of on the outside, it might look something like this, uh, where you have your teachers, your shepherds, your evangelists, and they'll send out uh, the apostles and the prophets, okay? So thank you guys for joining. This is just kind of a sneak peek or really just a crash course into the five-fold ministry as a whole. Um, but there's been a lot of research, a lot of great studies done over the last 10 years especially. Uh, if you want to dig in further, looking into uh, the fivefold ministry, your gifting, uh, here's several books that I highly recommend. Uh, so a really great intro book is Primal Fire uh, by Neil Cole. Uh, this really quickly goes through kind of each of the giftings. One of the things that's special about this book is each section is written by a person that bears that gifting. So Neil Cole, uh, he's an apostle, uh, but the sections that focus on being a teacher and evangelist, uh, he co-authored with a teacher and evangelist, a prophet. Uh, so really unique uh, book there. Uh, one of the most in-depth books on the subject is The Permanent Revolution. Uh, this is a very in-depth study where he goes very deep actually into uh, how it relates with Myers-Briggs personalities, uh, looking throughout histories and different kind of social groups. Uh, so really great, powerful book. And the most recent is this uh, 5Q, the Five Intelligence uh, by Alan Hirsch. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, I hope that this was beneficial. Uh, and for you, as you begin looking at working with others in your community, uh, and it may, maybe at times when you butt heads and clash with others, you might think about, man, how is my role, my gifting, my vocation play an effect in that? Uh, so thank you all for joining, and I hope this was a blessing.